Hi, this is a review lesson on graphing points on a Cartesian coordinate system that is also called an XY plane. A Cartesian coordinate system is an XY plane, meaning that your horizontal axis is your X axis and your vertical axis is your Y axis. This point right here, this aqua colored point, is the origin. Origin, the word means beginning. So this is the beginning point. This is where your x is 0 and your y is 0. You also have four spaces when you have your x axis and your y axis crossing over each other. You have four spaces, and those are called quadrants. The word quad means four, so this is quadrant one. We designate the one in Roman numerals, so it's QI. Your X is positive because you're going to the right, and you're going up, so your Y is positive. Going counterclockwise, you go to quadrant two. Quadrant 2 has your x as negative because you're going to the left, but you're still going up, so your y is positive. So all the points in this quadrant 2 is going to be a negative for the first number and a positive for the second number. Still going counterclockwise, this is quadrant 3. Quadrant 3 has a negative for the x and a negative for the y going left and down. Quadrant 4, IV, Roman numerals, V is 5, I is 1. When you put the 1 in front of the 5, it's 5 minus 1, which is 4. That's just a little add-on. Quadrant 4, your X is positive and your Y is negative. You're going to the right and you're going down. You have ordered pairs when you're talking about a point. A point is also called an ordered pair. Ordered means that there, it's particular and what comes first and what comes last. So what comes first is always the number that tells you whether you're going left or right. It doesn't have to be an X, but we commonly use X for it. Y, what comes second, tells you whether you're going up or whether you're going down. If you're going down, it's a negative number. If you're going up, it's a positive number. Same thing with the X. If you're going to the left, it's a negative number. If you're going to the right, it's a positive number. I need to graph these points. My first point is 4, 5. So 4 is my x, and it's positive. So I start at the origin, and I go to the right, because it's positive, 4 units. I don't make a point there. My next number is 5, and 5 is in y's. So I go up 5 from the 4. Our 5 is located right here. Okay, now I need to plot negative 2, negative 3. Negative 2 says I go to the left 2, and negative 3 says I go down 3. It's all in where it is in the position. The first number, you go left and right. The second number, you go up and down. From the origin, you start with the origin. So 1, 0, I would go to the right 1, and I don't go up or down. So this one is not in a quadrant. It is on the x-axis. Negative 5, 3. I go to the left 5, and I go up 3. So this is in my second quadrant. 3, negative 5. I go to the right 3, and I go down 5, and that's in quadrant 4. So those are my five points that I needed to graph.
something that needs to be noted, especially since we're going to talk a little bit about K-pop and finances, those are big numbers that you're dealing with when you're talking about the finances for K-pop. It's in the millions of dollars. So you don't necessarily want your grid to be a one first and then a two and then a three. That's fine when we're talking about a smaller scale number. But say I have a grid and I need to plot 150 negative 20. Well, I can't go 150 out. I've only really got four units. And if I count each one of these marks as one, that's only 5, 10, 15, 20. So I could do the negative 20, but I can't do the 150. So to do the 150, what I do is I change my scale. And it doesn't have to necessarily match the Y, doesn't have to necessarily match with the X. You just have to be consistent with it. So I'm going to count the first tick mark here as, ooh, can I do 10? No, that would be 10, 20, 30, 40. Okay, so I'm going to count it as 50. But then I'm looking over here, and my biggest number is a 350. So I'm going to need to be able to fit 350 on this. So instead of 50, I'm going to count this as this is going to be my 100. This is going to be my 200. And all you have to do to change your scale is just mark a couple or make a note of it. Okay. And so this is going to be 100. I'm going to be the same for my X and Y, even though it doesn't have to be. It gives you a better picture when it is. So, but you don't want it the same if you're counting in ones and twos with the X value and you're counting in thousands with the Y value. That would not, you would not want that the same. Okay, so I need to plot 150, negative 20 now. 150 is to the right, 150, so it's right in the middle here. Negative 20 is just down just a little bit, okay, because that's about 100, so right around there. 100, 350 would be to the right 100 and up 350, so that's 2, 3, 350 would be in between here. And negative 275 would be to the left. 275, it would be over the halfway mark, so it's about right here. Oops, nope, I got to go down first, cross that out. That's a mistake. So I'm over here, and I need to go down 200. So down 200 is right here. Awesome. Okay, the next thing that you're going to encounter, besides actually plotting the points, is telling what quadrant or what axis they are on. If they're in a quadrant, they're not on an axis. And if they're on an axis, they're not in a quadrant. They're on that boundary line. And what are the ordered pairs from the graph? So to start out here, I have 2, 0, and it wants to know what quadrant or axis it is on. So 2, 0 would be 2 to the right and neither up nor down. So that would be on my x-axis. So my answer would be the x-axis. Let me put a little hyphen between them, saying that it belongs to this word. So it's the x-axis. And then 5, negative 3 would be 5 to the right and 3 down. So that would be quadrant four. And <clears throat> from the beginning, when you get used to it, you should know just by looking at it. You shouldn't have to do the graph as to what quadrant it is. In. Because here the x is negative, so that means I go left. This means I go up. So I would be up in this spot right here, which would be quadrant two. 
whenever you have a zero in your point, you are on an axis. So because I have a zero for the x and a number for the y, this is on the y-axis. All righty. Okay, what are the ordered pairs for each point? We have A, A is right here, so that goes to the right one and up two. So the ordered pair would be one comma two. And you always have to put parentheses around an ordered pair because that tells the person it's a point. If you don't have parentheses, I don't know that it's a point, okay? B. B is up here, and so I'm not going left or right, so that's going to be 0, and I go up 5. So B would be 0, 5. And C, I go to the left 5 and up 4, so that's negative 5 and 4. Okay, D, I go to the left one, and I don't go up or down, so this is going to be negative one comma zero. Negative one comma zero. And it takes me a long time to write these things out, so I'm just going to tell you where these ones are at. So E, I go to the right two and down three, so that would be two negative three. F, I go up, sorry, for F, I go, I don't go anywhere. I don't go right or left, and I don't go up or down. So that's at zero, zero. That's my origin. For G, I go to the left, five, and down, five. So that's negative five, comma, negative five. H, I go, I don't go left or right, so that's zero, but I go down six, so it would be zero, comma, negative six. Okay, so in summary, graphing points on a Cartesian coordinate system, which is an xy plane, you have an x-axis, which always is your horizontal axis, goes left and right. You have a y-axis, which is your vertical axis, and goes up and down. If you go up, it's positive. If you go down, it's negative. For the x-axis, if you go to the left, it's negative. If you go to the right, it's positive. You have an origin, which is your 0, 0 point. You have four quadrants, and the first quadrant is positive, positive. Second quadrant, negative, positive third quadrant, negative, negative, and fourth quadrant, positive, negative. Awesome. Have fun.